What's going on everybody? It is Salty Trico here, and first thing you should notice is that I'm using facecam. Woo! I think this is the first video where I'm actually going to be using facecam for the entire video, which is pretty cool. Uh, as you can tell, there's still some kinks to be ironed out, like the fact that that is on an angle. There we go. Much better. I'm straight now, I think. Perfect. But yeah, camera on. We'll figure that all, uh, out later. And so today we're going to be doing a video about the Pokemon that kind of got robbed. That they're, they're just missing the one little thing that'll give them the extra kick to be really viable. And um, I've been meaning to do some sort of video like this for a while. Um, a while back I had a little mini-series, which I planned to make more videos on, even though I ended up making one, uh, one video on and then forgetting about it. Um, it was about how I would buff certain Pokemon that, uh, that weren't quite great. So yeah, also just to clarify, this video isn't about like the worst Pokemon in each generation, it's more just the Pokemon that could have gotten the little bit more. They're just missing that one little link. Um, PokeMMD made a video that actually inspired me to get off my ass and actually make one of these videos. So yeah, here we are. And we'll be starting with Gen 1, and Gen 1 was actually a very difficult one to choose from because most of the Pokemon in this generation are either good or they're really, really shit. So choosing like a couple Pokemon that just didn't have what they needed was really difficult. And you can kind of tell with the ones that I picked. Like, first one that I uh, that I chose off was Furo. Should also mention that I'm choosing three from each generation. We'll uh, quickly run through all those. And Furo's main problem is that it doesn't have Brave Bird. Um, its best uh, flying step is actually Drill Peck, which is not great. And even though its stats are also pretty miserable, just like not having Brave Bird was the one last kick in the balls. And this isn't a great example of what like the list is going to be like, because once again, there aren't too many Pokemon from Generation 1 that just, just didn't have that one little thing. But, yeah, you know, let's go on to Farfetch'd, and Farfetch'd uh, has a lot more going for it than Firo. Like, Firo had a at least decent 90 attack stat to work off of. Um, Farfetch'd is a Mon that got a lot, like, surprisingly. It has a great ability in Defiant. Defiant's a fantastic ability. It also has a signature, uh, signature item that improves its critical hit ratio by 2. And also, I'm pretty sure it gets Sword Dance. I didn't actually check before. Yeah, it gets Sword Dance, it gets Prey Bird, it gets like Leaf Blade, so it can be critting a lot. It also gets Knock Off. Also gets First Impression, which is a really strong priority move. It gets a lot, but the thing is, these are terrible stats. They're actually like they're abysmal. Actually, like I would not wipe my butt with these stats. They're that bad. And. Yeah, I guess we're just moving on to Flareon. Set the pace pretty quick, because we got a lot of mounts to go through. Should also mention that this is considering Gen 8 and National decks. So, for example, like Gengar, because Gengar in Generation 1 Shadow Ball is physical, so it didn't have a Ghost Stab, that's not going to be counted toward this list. This is considering Gen 8 and maybe Gen 7, because some of these Pokemon don't exist anymore. Next one we're going to be getting into is Flareon. Flareon has a decent amount going for it. First uh, of note is it's 130 attack stat. That is very big. Um, also gets the ability Guts, so you can run things like Toxic Orb. I know how to spell. And then you can run like Flare Blitz, Facade, like Quick Attack if you want. But the problem with this mod is that one, it gets absolutely no coverage at all. Like look at that, its best coverage is freaking Superpower and Iron Tail and it gets nothing else. And two, it's slow, and it's also frail. And those are the two combinations of things that kill Mons. You can be slow, and you can be frail, but you can't be both at once. If you have both of them at once, it's just over for you at that point. And that'll be it for Generation 1, and moving on over to Generation 2, uh, if you looked at all of the other ones, and didn't wait for me to explain them in the video, you're a cheater. Generation 2 is also another tricky one to choose from, for the same reasons as Gen 1. There's a lot of really bad Pokemon there, and not a lot that just didn't have, like, the little kick to put it over the edge. Um, so once again, some of these might be slightly questionable, and the first one I have is Donphan. And Donphan has quite a bit going for it. It's got, honestly, a pretty solid stat spread. Base 90 HP is pretty solid. 120 attack is nothing to sneeze at, same thing with 120 defense. Uh, the special attack, you don't care about anyway. Speed's whatever, special defense is whatever. Um, it has Stab Earthquake, which is always great for a Pokemon. It gets a Rapid Spin, so it's one of the few Pokemon that can actually uh, actually remove hazards uh, with Rapid Spin. It has Ice Shard, which is a pretty good priority move, especially for a Ground-type. 
Also gets moves like knockoff. I don't know if you can actually see uh, all this in frame, but it gets like knockoff, seed bomb. It gets a lot of things. But one thing it does not have is instant recovery, and it's a it's a bulky archetype, archetypical Pokemon. That's a big word. So it's got that base 90 HP and the um, 120 defense, but it really doesn't have any way to abuse its bulk to its advantage. I think the only recovery move it gets is rest. And having no instant recovery is something you're going to hear me talk about a lot on this list. And next up we have Smeargle. I did not look at that, that is oddly specific. So, Smeargle has obviously a lot going for it due to the fact that it learns literally every move in the game. I'm pretty sure there isn't any move it doesn't get. I might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure it learns like literally every move. And obviously it could do a lot with that, it could like quiver dance, freaking boom burst, got that stab boom burst, like just that combination there is already ridiculous. Um, it gets moody, which is a freaking broken ability, technician is nothing to sneeze at either, that's also a great ability. But then you look at its stats, and none of these stats are good. 75 speed is its best stat, and even that is bad. So. You can't do anything. It's got base 20 attack and special attack. You can literally do nothing with this mon, except, like, abuse, like, sticky web. I guess. Because you, you can, like, you can try to put sticky web, stealth rock, etc. Like, you can have a suicide lead because it also gets spore. Um, so the only thing it could do is really abuse its move pool, especially with entry hazards. And sticky web was also a great plus for Smeargle, um, because it can put something to sleep turn one and then uh, sticky web on the swap, so he get good value about putting him on to sleep and then getting sticky web up for team support. But now with heavy duty boots, sticky web, while sticky web was already a previously a uh, previously un unreliable and inconsistent strategy, now it's even worse. So Smeargle has even less of a place. This is also once again should uh, mention that this is singles. I'm not talking about doubles here. And now we have Hitmontop. Hitmontop is also still a good Pokemon, has two fantastic abilities with Intimidate and Technician. Um, you can run an offensive because now it has, it has Close Combat and Triple Axel. Uh, also gets Rapid Spin for Hazard, so it gets a lot going for it. Also I think it has Mach Punch? Yeah. It has Mach Punch and Bullet Punch for priority. It has a lot going for it, but once again, for a bulky Mon, one thing it does not have is Instant Recovery. And that's another thing that just kills it. So you'll see a lot of them run like Assault Fest or Leftovers or something, just trying to bank on that one longevity. Gotta take a sip of my water because my throat's already dry. Some good water. And there we go, that's it on top. So that's it for Gen 2, and now we're moving on to Gen 3. And one thing you might notice is that I don't have slacking on this list. And I wanted to keep like the obvious ones off because I felt like it would ruin the point of the video. If I was just be like, oh, slacking, its ability is bad, woo! So, you will not see slacking, Regigigas, uh, I believe I took off Ar Archeops, and also um, Talonflame from the list, just because those are kind of obvious to point fingers at. So I wanted to be a little bit more creative, and first off we have Subtile. Subtile is a mon whose stats don't necessarily let it down, but the combination of its stats and move pool are what let it down. Unburden's a great ability that it can abuse with like with like seeds, probably grassy seed is the best you want to use because it also boosts uh, its grass but also weakens earthquake so any of the seeds to abuse Unburden. Also weakness policy if you want to do endure and be literally insane. But the thing is, Sceptile's made to be a special attacker. It's got a really good um, 105 special attack stat and it gets a really powerful uh, grass stab in, um, in Leaf Storm. But then it doesn't get much else. Hidden Power isn't in the game anymore. It only shows it here because I'm in the National Dex uh, section. But other than like Leaf Storm, it gets like Dragon Pulse, which is whatever, and Focus Blast as well. So it has an extremely bare bones special move pool. So it it can't abuse its very um its solid 105 special attack stat. Um, on, on the other side of the spectrum, it actually has some pretty solid uh, physical moves. It gets Swords Dance as a great boosting move. Should also mention that it does not get any major special boosting moves other than work up. Um, it gets Leaf Blade, which is solid, solid stab move. It gets Earthquake. Also gets an, um, a decent amount of physical moves: Dragon Claw, Drain Punch, Acrobatics for if you want to run an Unburdened set. Um, it gets Pup. 
It gets a Thunder Punch. I don't know if you can see that still. It also gets Rock Slide. So it gets a good amount of coverage options. But it can't abuse its high special attack stat. Its coverage moves are weak, even on the physical side. And it's just overall just unimpressive. Could have been a lot better. Next up is Bayonet. Bayonet has a pretty impressive 105 attack stat. And this applies especially to Mega Bayonet. It just doesn't get any moves to abuse its attack stat. Like, its highest, um... Its best stab move is Shadow Claw. Like, having your best, your po most powerful stab move be 70 base power is absolutely pathetic. Like, at least Subtitle, when I was talking about him being, him being unpowerful on the, on the attacking, that, out of words, um, side. He, at least he got Leaf Blade, which is 90. Shadow Claw is just abysmal in pretty much every way. Um, also, it doesn't get too much coverage. I think, yeah, look at this coverage. Gunk Shot knockoff whatever so it, it just really can't use its uh, high attack stat to its benefit also its abilities aren't that great don't doesn't uh, help it out a lot also next up is abzal has some decent abilities uh super luck is whatever uh justified is a really good ability on it for uh, a knockoff absorber and unlike bayonet it actually does um it is capable of abusing its uh, high attack stat it's got a good moves like knockoff it gets close combat now, it gets friggin' Mega Horn player off, it gets a lot of physical moves to uh, to abuse its attack stat with, but it's slow and it's frail, and like I talked about before, you can be slow or you can be frail, but you can't be both. That just doesn't work in Pokemon. And Ebzal, unfortunately, is both of those. So, moving on from Gen 3, we have Gen 4, and 4 has some very obvious ones that are talked about a lot. First off is the Luxray. Once again, has that nice 120 attack stat. Um, unfortunately, its bus move is Wild Charge, which is... N Honestly, Wild Charge is a very bad move. It is not a good move. 90 base power and 1-4th recoil. That's a significant amount of recoil and not a lot of base power. It has some decent coverage, fortunately. It gets super power, which is whatever. Does it get close? It didn't get close combat, which is unfortunate. Um, Psychic Fangs, player off. It's... The coverage is okay. Some of the moves are kind of weak, but overall it's fine. Its biggest downfall is being pure electric type. It has almost no resistances and is weak to ground. And combined with the fact that it isn't very bulky or fast, you just kind of send this mon out and it dies. And also that's in conjunction with guts, which means that it's uh, if you want to abuse it to its full potential, it's being chipped out by its uh, by its own item every turn and with wild charge re uh, recoil especially as well so this is a mon that when it gets on the field it doesn't do much and it's hard to get on the field speaking of being hard to get on the field we have rampardos which has i think except for mewtwo x and zation crown the highest unboosted attack in the game um don't quote me on that i'm not, not actually sure but that's a big attack stat and these are not good so once again, it's slow and it's frail, also it has a dog shit defensive typing. Head Smash is an absolutely fantastic move. You can, I think there's a calculation for Gen 3 where you can do like 80% or something to Metagross, like, just with Life Orb, which is freaking ridiculous. So you, you can run like a Rock Polish set, but it's another scenario where it's hard to get on the field, and when you do get on the field, it might get a Mon or two if it's lucky, but most of the time it will just die. And now we have Electivire, a mon which was very hype in Generation 4. People thought it was a very good mon, and it wasn't. So, Electivire has similar problems to Luxray in the fact that it's not the bulkiest mon in the world, not the fastest, but base 95 speed is good, although I don't understand why they had to drop it from the 105 from Electivire. Like, I got it got bigger, but it really wasn't worth it. The, the higher uh, attacks, that was nice, but it's whatever. It also doesn't have any great abilities, and his move pool is just okay at best. Also doesn't get any boosting moves, doesn't get sword stance, I think I might get agility. Nope, doesn't even get agility. So it's just a mon that can't do much and probably dies when you get on the field. Next, Gen 5, we have a couple of very interesting mons. One is Zoroark, and while Zoroark is a decent mon on its own, and it has a fantastic ability in Illusion, Okay, we're gonna have a brief visitor. This is my dog. Say hi. I don't think she wants to say hi. So, 
Zoroark. Zoroark is a mon that has a lot going for it. It has Nasty Plot, which is a great boosting move. It's got Dark Stab and Dark Pulse. Also can run like Knock Off. Has Flamethrower, uh, Sludge Bomb. It can do a lot, but the problem is with Illusion, it's pretty easy to predict around it because of Team Preview. Like, Team Preview, if it wasn't around, Zoroark would be a menace. Because you send out a mon and you think you're safe with your whatever psychic type or ghost type that's out there and then you get obliterated by Dark Pulse, Specs Dark Pulse or something. And unfortunately that wasn't the case for Zoroark, it never really got the chance to shine because Team Preview came around and kind of screwed it. So next is Drodagon, and this is a mon that has a lot going for it as well. It has decent defense stats, has great abilities. What do you want? What's up? <sighs> yeah, so Drodagon has a bunch of great abilities. Um, rough Skin is great for defensive mon, Sheer Force is great offensively, and Mold Breaker is just good all around. Um, also has a lot of good moves, Glare for instant paralysis, it can Stealth Rocks, it can set him up. This is a very good defensive mon, it can do, it can do defense and offense very well, but 1. It is slow, and 2. It has no instant recovery, like this mon could so easily have gotten Roost and then been a defensive, like a significant defensive presence. Because pure dragon type is actually very good defensively as well. Now we have Golurk. Golurk also falls into the same category of being slow and frail. And Golurk especially falls victim to this because it has a freaking fantastic combination of uh, stabs and earthquake and poltergeist. This just this combination is extremely hard to resist. And anything that walls that can just get like you can just trick it to choice band and then it's over th for them. Which makes it even more upsetting that it has that nice 124 attack stat, almost unresistible stabs, and then has these stats. Slow, pretty insignificant bulk. Now we're moving on to generation 6. Dragged it there for a second. Um, generation 6 was another one that was kind of hard to pull from because there aren't, once again, a lot of mons that are either, or just like dwindling on a, on success. So Gudra is one that obviously has fantastic bulk, like even like defensively Fizz Duff, it's not the greatest, but but especially defensive you cannot kill this thing, which is even more of a shame that it doesn't have instant recovery. Also has a decent special move pool to, uh, to abuse off its 110, like it gets Draco, it gets Sludge Bomb. Um, I've seen a lot of mixed sets that also have like Earthquake and Power Whip. So it can do a lot, especially with its solid abilities. Um, the one, I guess, instant recovery thing I would it would have would be if you run like a really gimmicky rest hydration set. But that's honestly really too gimmicky. Just if it got like recovery or something, this mod could have been a demon. But unfortunately, it is not, and it just kind of sits there. Now we have Noivern. Noivern, obviously very fast, decent special attack stat has Boom Burst and Draco Meteor, two incredibly powerful moves, also Hurricane, um, doesn't have a boosting move. Why? We may never know. Also, it, its special attack stat is just meager. Like, it gets it by, but not by much. Boost that by 10, give it Nasty Plot, or even Calm Mind or anything, this mod could have been a demon. Now we have Furfru, which has absolutely fantastic ability. It literally just doubles its defense. Turns this from, from below average to very good. And you cannot kill this thing once it gets a cotton guard up. I still don't know how to type. Also, I think it gets body press. Does it get body press? It doesn't. Okay. So, two things that hold it back. One, it's normal type. And normal is not very good defensively. Has pretty much no resistances. Two, no instant recovery. Uh, it does get rest, which... Pretty much every mine gets rest, so it's not saying a lot. So it's good stalling with like Toxic, it's got Cotton Guard, you can run like Rest Sleep Talk or something, but it's really the normal type that holds it back the most. And now we're getting to Gen 7, we have Crabominable. And Crabominable, that's a tongue twister, especially because my throat is dry. 
great ability in uh, Iron Fist boosting its punching moves, so it's like Ice Punch and shit like that, you know what it is. It has a bunch of great moves, Ice Hammer is a very good move. Uh, close Combat it has, which is very good. It has Earthquake, has a lot of good coverage. Um, the problem is that it's Ice type and that it's slow. And just like being slow and frail don't work together, being slow and ice type don't work together. And Crabominable doesn't really find too many chances to get in and then throw that uh throw off those meaty 132 base power or er, not base power attack close combats. Wishiwashi is a mon that has fantastic stats in its schooling form, um, and doesn't really have anything to use it with. It does get like flip turn, it gets aqua tail if you want to use it, earthquake. Um, it doesn't get any ice coverage other than ice beam, so you see a lot of mix ups with like assault vest. But there's a reason it, it uh, runs assault vest. One, it doesn't have instant recovery, and two, it doesn't have any boosting moves. Like, let's look at its status move pool. Wow, look at that. Awesome. Next up is Zergatry, a mon that is actually very good still. I mean, look at this freaking special attack set, 173, that's like mind-blowing levels of attack set, that's freaking Mewtwo Y levels of attacks. Um, and then it's just slow and frail and electric type. Doesn't work out very well. Fortunately for it though, it does get energy ball, so it has an option to at least try and touch ground types, but it is still a pretty flawed Pokemon. And now we're moving on to the finale, Generation 8. The first one up is Cramorant. And the reason I want to talk about Cramorant is I think that Gold Missile, at least in singles, is one of, if not the best ability in the game. It's actually ridiculous. Like, when, when you use, use Surfer Dive, and Surf is, for the record, a very good move. Yeah, 90 base power, 100% accuracy. Um, you get the Gold Missile. And what this does is, if you get hit with... I'm not sure if it's just in general or a physical move. I think it's a physical move, but if it's both physical and special, it's even better than I think it is. You, The user takes one-fourth of their max HP, so that can be like Pikachu max HP or Blissey max HP, and then it drops their defense to stage. So you get punished 25% of your health, and you get your defense dropped just for hitting the other Pokemon. It's actually, like, ridiculous. Also, there's the chance to get the Pikachu Gold Missile, which instantly paralyzes the attacker. It's a very good ability, which is why it sucks that it's on the Mon with these stats. Up next is Zerud. Zerud will be quick. Its only ability is Leaf Guard. How easy would it have just been to just slap Tough Claws on that and be like, wow, it has Tough Claws now. Uh, now Power Whip has ridiculous damage, now Darkest Lariat has additional damage. Also it doesn't get knockoff, which sucks as well. So two things for Zerud, Tough Claws, and knockoff. Regieleki is a pretty obvious one. Uh, it's the fact that it gets literally zero coverage whatsoever, except for freaking Ancient Power. And that's kind of silly, kind of silly, kind of silly. And that's honestly all I really have for Regieleki. My throat's getting sore. so. That's going to be it for the video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Hit that bell. Smash the subscribe. Smash the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions or comments on the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.